The audit reports for two of my high severity findings got published, so I can finally start making some videos focused on these specific findings that I submitted and the technical details around them, uh, my thought process, how I found them, etc. I'll also share some interesting stats I gathered around similar findings, such as how frequent each finding appeared in past order contests on Code Arena, and the average payout that you can expect when you find this particular issue. So this first finding is in the Sturdy contest, which happened in May of 2022. This was a bit of a special finding for me because it was the first high severity finding that got confirmed for me on Code Arena. But to be honest, it's a bit of a bullshit one because it was also found by 32 other wardens and I'm not sure, when I submitted this, I wasn't sure that it was actually going to be uh, confirmed as a high severity or a medium severity because in the past, similar findings have usually gone to the medium severity category. But I think in this case, for this particular finding, it was pretty obvious that it was a bug and I suppose that was the reason why it did get raised to the high severity category. Nothing too interesting to talk about in this finding. This is an issue where the code is checking for the transaction success after the return statement. So essentially just a typo in the code. So you can see this line here makes an ETH transfer to the to address and it's using the low level call function in Solidity. Whenever you do this, you want to check if the transfer actually got sent. Because in the case that this to address is another contract and that contract doesn't actually have a fallback function or a receive function, this transfer is just going to fail silently, uh, meaning that the user will lose their funds when they're trying to withdraw from this protocol. So you can see that on this line, it actually makes that check requiring that the sent boolean is true, but it's actually made after the return statement. So it seems like it's just a typo here where they were trying to check it, but somehow it was done after the return statement, so that check will never actually happen. So pretty clear cut issue here and quite obvious if you actually saw this as you were reading through the code. And it's one of the reasons why this finding was also found by so many other wardens. And since it was found by so many other people, the rewards for this particular finding was very diluted and this was only paid out for $14. But not really complaining because this finding did get me over the line of getting my first high severity finding on Code Arena. So pretty happy with that. And I guess this kind of also shows that there are pros and cons to a bug bounty platform where it's paying duplicates but it's sharing the prize between everyone who's found the same issue. So in summary, this is an issue of unchecked return values on a low level call. Uh, basically, if you do a low level call in Solidity, this is bad. You have to always check the success of that call because it may just be the case that the transaction goes through successfully, but no funds are transferred because this call failed. Historically, this finding has appeared in four previous audit contests in Sturdy, NTFX, Boot Finance, and Malt. I will leave links to each of these findings in the video description below so you can go check out those findings um, to see some more examples of a vulnerable code. And these are the payouts that was uh, given to the wardens who found these uh, findings. So in total, there were 37 wardens who found issues around low level calls for an average reward of $108. Now this next finding is in the Cali report, which occurred in May 2022. This was, I would say, my first legit high severity finding because the payout was 3k and it was only found by three wardens. 
So this is the finding, no revert on transfer for ERC20 tokens. Some ERC20 tokens don't revert on failure. Essentially not all ERC20 tokens follow the standard properly. And generally when you're performing ERC20 token transfers, the best practice is to use the Open Zeppelin safe transfer from rather than the standard transfer from. In this case, in the create vault function, you can actually force the code to use transfer from on an ERC20 by passing in a user controlled parameter. So this is the vulnerable code in question. This function is called create vault and it's taking some user inputs and some value that's transferred in from the user and it creates a vault depending on the token type that you pass in. So you can create a vault around an ERC721 or an ERC20 vault type. Down here is where the value transfers actually take place. It does a check here if the token type is ERC721, it's going to use transfer from. And if it's the ERC20 type, it's going to use safe transfer from. You can see that the value that it's checking against, vault.tokenType, is actually taken from this token type parameter, which is provided by the user. And the token that it's forming the transfer from is also a user parameter. And there is essentially no check that the user is actually providing the correct token type according to the token that is passed into this address. Obviously with functions that are external, any users can call this function. So you can't just trust the user is going to actually provide this function with proper values for these parameters. So hopefully you can see now how this exploit works. We're going to pass in an ERC20 token here that doesn't revert on a fail transfer. And for this token type, we're going to pass in ERC721. So by the time the code gets down to here where the value itself is actually transferred from the user who's calling this function, the function will think that it's transferring an ERC721. So it will execute this line here. So when this line executes, it's going to do a transfer from from an ERC20 token address. And when it's doing a transfer from, you can put in any value you want here, like an extremely large value that you don't actually have for your function parameter. This transfer will fail, but it will fail silently. So what you end up is transferring zero assets into this vault, but someone else bidding on this vault will actually see a high value that you supplied. Uh, for the token amount. So potentially they will be bidding on an empty vault. And when the other user exercises their option on the funds inside the vault, they will receive no funds back. So essentially you have stolen the other user's funds if you trick them into interacting with the vault that you generated in this uh, bad way. So you can see both these high severity findings that I found was mostly focused on value transfers, which I found is the area where you can find the most amount of bugs. There's a lot of potential for errors when you're making transfers um, in smart contracts, especially since they are probably going to be the most impactful issues, such as users losing their funds or the protocol losing their funds. So it does make sense to focus around fund transfers when you are looking through the code and trying to find bugs. So the way I actually spotted this issue was I noticed that a um, transfer from is made on an ERC721 token. Now this is actually a finding in itself. You shouldn't use transfer from on an ERC721 generally because in case you are transferring to another contract and that contract cannot handle uh, receiving an ERC721, you can lock the ERC721 token inside another contract accidentally if you send it to it. So the general best practice is actually use safe transfer from on ERC721 as well as ERC20. 
You can see this issue was deemed as a medium severity issue. Use safe transfer from instead of safe transfer for ERC721. I actually didn't submit a finding for this because I thought that was okay to use transfer from in this case because you are only transferring to this contract and this contract knows how to handle ERC721s. So I didn't actually submit a finding for this particular medium severity issue which you can see a lot of other wardens did submit. So it's probably a good idea to just submit this as an issue anyway, uh, because it's kind of best practice to use a safe transfer from rather than transfer from. So even if you didn't find the high severity issue, you can still submit this as a medium severity issue. So once I noticed the initial issue with the transfer from an ERC721, I looked at the logic around this and I noticed that the token type was a user controlled. So going further down that line of thinking was how I found this high severity issue, which in summary is a user submitting the wrong token type on purpose to force the transfer to occur with this line instead of the correct logic, which is here. In general, trusting user inputs and sanitizing, validating it properly, connects quite well back to my Web2 penetration testing. So I guess this is why uh, this particular finding uh, kind of uh, just jumped out to me as I read this code. So as a best practice, calling transfer from on an ERC721 token is bad. Instead, you should use the Open Zeppelin safe transfer from for ERC721 tokens. Now for this best practice finding using safe transfer from rather than transfer from for ERC721, it occurred four times in previous audit contests on Code Arena. You can see the amounts here that these findings got paid for. In summary, 36 wardens found a similar issue such as this and the average reward per issue was $169. So I hope that was a good explanation of these two high severity findings. I hope to do more of these videos on some of the medium severity issues as well as they get released. I can tell you there are a lot more findings coming through the pipeline. I've been getting into a pretty good rhythm recently with these medium severity findings, pretty much submitting a few mediums in every contest. So that's really good, uh, making good progress with uh, these audit contests. It's going to be interesting when the results come out um, to see the payouts for those findings and whether I can climb the leaderboard a bit more. Now just an update on the leaderboard to close this video out. I actually moved up to 25th on the 60 day leaderboard without actually doing anything just because of how the 60 days is split up between these competitions. Um, the 3k was one that came in recently. So I guess that is why I'm kind of slowly climbing a bit without any more results coming out. So do look forward to uh, doing more of these videos soon. Uh, do leave your feedback in the comments below. Uh, let me know if this made sense, um, whether I should go into more detail or for example, give a bit more uh, code examples. Uh, yeah, give, give me your feedback. Let me know what you think. And um, thanks for watching. I will see you next time.